There are five things you should never do in a lucid dream. I have made a video like this before. Let's just get right into it. The first one is kind of obvious and that is to look in a mirror. You know, you've probably heard this one before, but when you look in a mirror in a lucid dream, basically you just get reflected back to you all of your kind of deepest fears and expectations. And it's also very, very likely to destabilize the dream and kind of make you wake up. So it's not what you want to be doing in a lucid dream. There are some mirrors you can look into, but they really, you know, any, any normal mirror that you might be imagining, like a bathroom mirror or something in, you know, a bedroom, don't look in them, okay? You're just going to end your lucid dream. The next thing is you should never ask for a surprise or a random scary experience. I've heard this being said in forums. Uh, I think this one, this one guy in a forum said, just become lucid and then just ask the dream to show you something scary. What a dumb idea. Like you bear in mind the subconscious mind, your subconscious mind is what creates the lucid dream, creates the dream scene. So if you start asking it to show you something scary, it's gonna show you something scary. It's not gonna be just this like, oh, it's kind of scary, like a little bit creepy, no. It's gonna be your deepest fears. So your subconscious mind, obviously, right, knows what you're most afraid of and what will really traumatize you. So you know, it's essentially like you're, you're asking for trouble. You're literally asking your own mind to kind of traumatize itself, which is just not, not clever. You, would, you wouldn't really wanna do that. By the way, we cover stuff like this in the Lucid Tribe, which is like a private community. We do kind of like, I make private videos to answer your questions. The link's in the description, or you can just go howtolucid.com slash lucid tribe if you wanna get more personal videos and really kind of like dive into this. The next one is to spin too fast. If you're in a lucid dream and you start really, really quickly spinning around, well, you're gonna probably lose lucidity unless you have this intention. Um, usually what happens if you spin too fast, which is what almost everybody does, you're just gonna wake up. And more than that, you could actually end up in sleep paralysis because sleep paralysis is very closely linked to your kind of the inner ear function and kind of like sensitivity to movement so if you in the dream start spinning around really quickly I have heard experiences and I have a couple of times myself managed to just get myself stuck in sleep paralysis now I don't know if there's a direct scientific link between spinning and being in sleep paralysis but there's definitely some kind of mental thing going on there some kind of link um, I don't know what it is but I find that if I spin too fast sometimes I end up just laying there half awake half asleep unable to move and I've heard a lot of other people say the same thing so I would recommend just not spin too fast. Just if you're gonna spin, just spin kind of like, it's like you're slowly rotating, like you're a little watch on a little pedestal or something. You're just slowly rotating around. And that can stabilize your dreams, but don't spin too fast. The next one has been very hotly debated, mainly by me in places like Discord uh, and Reddit. And that is you should never do anything violent or really aggressive in a lucid dream. And this is mainly because it can, in my opinion, and the opinion of several others, it can negatively affect your mental state. Uh, so if you intentionally go into a lucid dream and start, you know, attacking people or doing something, you know, something that you would never really do in waking life because you know it's wrong, it's going to have a negative impact on your mental and emotional state. Because to your brain, you've got to remember, to your mind and to your body, like your nervous system, there is no difference between doing something in a lucid dream and doing something in waking life. So to your brain, it's the same as if you had actually done the thing. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. We... On the one hand, you think it's great that you can practice real life skills and improve at them in real life, right? But that same mechanism can give you negative benefits or negative effects if you do something bad in the dream. This is the same mechanism, you know, to your brain, it's the same thing. That's, that's how you're able to improve at real life skills by practicing them in a dream. So by the same mechanism, if you do something really bad, like attacking somebody or, or worse in a lucid dream, to your brain, it's like you've done it. So it's it's not gonna be good, you know, that your mindset and emotional and mental state will not be good as a result of that. And by the way, I'm not talking about just, you know, using telekinesis to throw a dragon out of the way. Okay, I'm talking about intentional, like, nasty, cruel stuff that you would just not do in waking life. And this kind of segues onto the next one, which is negative thoughts and kind of thinking to yourself, what if this happened or what if this happened now in a negative way almost like you're expecting or waiting for something bad to happen if you do this in a lucid dream the main kind of guidance is your expectation and beliefs so of course if you expect something really bad to happen like let's say if you're flying this is a really common one you're flying around and then you ex you look down and you think ah oh, but i should i shouldn't be flying i should probably start falling ar around about now and then of course you start falling because you expected it to happen. So whatever you expect to happen, if you have a negative thought, if you doubt yourself, it's very likely to happen. So just, you know, watch out for that. I'm also on the hunt to find the worst thing to do in a lucid dream. 
in your experience as well. So leave a comment letting me know what the worst thing you can imagine is in a lucid dream. If you've made it this far, you've probably watched more than 90% of people. So congratulations, your attention span is good enough to be a lucid dreamer. If you wanna go deeper on this stuff, like I said, I have this community that I put together called the Lucid Tribe, uh, which is where we talk about stuff. You know, I regularly update content. I make personal videos for you, answering your questions. I, you know, reply to stuff. You have access to a whole bunch of my eBooks and courses, all for pretty much like one really, really tiny monthly fee. Uh, you can leave any time. There's no like weird contract or anything like that. And I'm constantly improving it. So yeah, if you are interested in that and like diving in deeper to lucid dreaming, there's a whole bunch of really cool lucid dreamers in there. You're going to love it. The link is in the description. It's called the Lucid Tribe. And that's it. I'll see you next time.